What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of High Mythology, the show where we get high enough to talk to the trees <laughs> and uh, tell you guys silly stories from mythology and folklore. Yes. Yes. Uh, tonight, we will be bringing you some Native American myths and legends. Myths. I list that one out. <laughs> Mike Tyson presents Native American. <laughs> Native American myth. Mythithis, myth, mythithis, myths, yes. <laughs> and legends. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hey, yeah. So yeah. Um. Yeah, starting this one pretty big already, <laughs> <laughs> as you guys can probably tell. <laughs> yeah, we pre we pre game this one. Oh, uh, pre game this one. We're gonna be taking uh taking next week off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So so get in. Get in your get it in while you can, I guess. It's true. <laughs> you you do you. You do you. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah. So uh, uh Kimbo picked out a bunch of good stories for us. Uh instead of babbling away, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to her. Uh with the husband's promise by the Tiwa tribe. Thank you. <laughs> There lived in the village of San Juan a young man, Capin, and the maiden, Willow Flower. (laughs) These two were deeply in love, and on the day of their wedding, they promised each other that as long as they were alive, they would never part. The couple built a home on the edge of the village and lived happily together for three moons. Until one day, the lovely maiden became ill. The young husband did everything to help her get well, but instead she became worse, and in a short time, she was dead. Oh, where's where's her? (laughs) The young husband was despondent. He could not understand why she had to go so soon, after she had promised that she would never leave him. With many moons had passed, however, he was learning to live with his grief. At night, he did not have much to do and would usually visit his parents. One night, as he was walking back across town to his own home, he noted... Uh, noticed a light burning in the distance beyond the village. For several days, he saw the light shining at the same spot around midnight, and it began to bother him. Even during the day as he worked, he might he would think about it. One night, he said to himself, I must go to see this light and find out what it is. It took him about an hour to reach the place, and much to his surprise, he found a house there. Frightened but curious to know who lived in it, he decided to peep through the window. Creeper. He was astonished <laughs> to see his lovely wife. She was standing by the fireplace, combing her beautiful black hair, which came down to her knees. Oh, wow. That's a lot of hair. That's going to get tangled up. Mm-hmm. So we had to brush it so often. Capine said, <laughs> Aha! At last I found her. The light was kept burning for me to see. Why didn't I come sooner? And I wonder where she is going, all dressed up like that. Now his wife finished combing her hair and was putting on her snow-white moccasins, Capine says. <laughs> I must speak with her before she leaves. Up the stairs he went, and, uh, standing in the only entrance to the house. He saw her poised to ascend the ladder and led to the rooftop. Uh, she said immediately, <laughs> What are you doing here? You might as well come in. Capine slowly descended the stairs, and he told her how he had seen the light for a number of nights and decided to investigate. He said, (laughs) If I had known you lived here, I would have come sooner. Willow Flower says, I kind of didn't want you to come. (laughs) You can't stay any longer. You can't go. Leave now. Capine says, (laughs) <laughs> are you fucking the mailman? <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, what are you thinking? Remember the promise you made when we got married? That we would never part. And now that I've found you, I'm going to stay. The anger, This angered Willow Flower, hey, and she said, You can't stay here. You don't belong with me. Until your time comes, you can't be with me. Go before it's too late. Mm. Capine insisted on staying, and this led to a long quarrel. At last, Willow Flower said, All right, you can stay for the night, provided you're a man. Capine retorts, (laughs) I am a man, Willow Flower says. In that case, you'll stay with me until the morning, and if you're still here, I'll go home with you to the village. Hmm? Do you agree? 
Capine says. Oh, yes, I agree. That's pretty much all I was asking for. <laughs> Willow Flower prepared a bed on the floor, and they both went to sleep. About three o'clock in the morning, P- uh, Capine was awoken by a pungent odor that stunk his nostrils. <laughs> It was coming from the body of his wife, and soon Capine could take it no longer and tolerate the odor of the rotten flesh. Slowly, he got out of bed and put on his clothes, and he said to himself, <laughs> My God, would she been eating <laughs> just beans and kimchi? <laughs> if I leave here before she wakes up, I will be free of these thoughts. <laughs> Very quietly, he went upstairs, and just as he reached the last step, Willow Flower woke up and cried. <laughs> Get back, you coward. You failed at the end of the bargain, huh? And now you must pay the penalty. Capine was not ready to join the people of death, so he jumped off the rooftop and ran towards home with all of his might. <laughs> you gotta eat one of these tasty, tasty farts. <laughs> but Willow Flower was swift as the wind, and in no time she was out of the house and running after him. Capine came to the Rio Grande, and he met an old medicine man from the village who said he was on his way to the mountains in search of game. The old man said, What's wrong, my son? Are you running away from someone? You look as if something awful has happened to you, like you've smelled the rankest fart of your life. (laughs) Capine could hardly talk, but he finally managed to gasp, saying, Uh, I didn't just smell it, I could taste it too. (laughs) (laughs) I'm running away from Willow Flower. The old man says, Ah, so you are. You've never learned to mind your own business, and now this this thing right here has happened to you. Capine says. <laughs> Old medicine man, you must help me. You are a powerful one. Send me where Willow Flower can't catch me. The old man says. Oh, there's no place on earth that'll hide you from a Willow Flower. Uh, I'll shoot you into the sky. Uh, yeah, there's plenty of room up there for you to run and jump to... Come. <laughs> I thought that was a comma. I was like, wow, to run, come, and jump. <laughs> That's the fantasy life. <laughs> Plenty of room for you to run. Period. <laughs> come, jump onto the shaft of this special arrow. Uh, come hop on this old man's shaft. <laughs> I just snorted do Viagra, kid. Hurry up. <laughs> Capine did as he was told. <laughs> the old man asked. <laughs> Capine, <laughs> are you comfortable on there? Because I'm comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Capine nods yes And the old man says Now get ready I'm gonna shoot you into the sky Where Willow Flower will never get you Went the old medicine man's bowstring (laughs) Into the sky With blue Capine I was going to say what it says, but you're like, (laughs) (laughs) and the noise just went so much more well with it. Fuck. (laughs) My cheeks are so bad. (laughs) Uh, Good evening. (laughs) With Capine on his way, the old medicine man returned to his own trail. A few minutes later, he met Willow Flower. (laughs) The medicine man says. (laughs) Oh, good morning, my child. Where where are you going? Willow Flower says. I'm running after Capine. Have you seen him? The old man says. Oh, yes. I talked to him uh, near the river a few minutes ago. Might you go there to wash your ass? (laughs) Willow Flower says. (laughs) You're a powerful one. Tell me where he's going. Hmm? Old man says. Uh, Capine, now in the sky. If you want to catch them, that's where you'll have to go. <laughs> Willow Flower says, <laughs> Please shoot me into the sky with your strong bow. Uh. And so the medicine man <laughs> put her into one of his special arrows and shot her into the sky. Uh. <laughs> to this day, Willow Flower is chasing Capine. Tonight, if the stars are out, just look to the west and you will see the two bright ones. 
about a foot apart. The first one is Capine, and the one following behind is Willow Flower chasing her husband. Oh. <laughs> come back. <laughs> no, really, come back. I miss you. I've been eating corned beef and, beef and cabbage for six months. <laughs> come back, please. You said you liked it. You said you liked it. That's some men's fantasies to eat a fart. <laughs> 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 it's just a corned beef fart right to the <laughs> yeah, That's how you get fucking pink, pink eye. eye. <laughs> pink lung. Pink lung. <laughs> Especially if you're eating it. I mean, I don't Especially know. if you're eating it. I uh, mean, I don't know. If you swallow, I mean. I mean, really, that's how you, you get just coli, right? You just use a mouth E. coli, yeah. <laughs> We've talked about this. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you just breathe it in, you take a hit of it, you're trying to eat it, then. <laughs> yeah, that becomes E. coli. Uh huh. Uh, on to story number two after oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Fight for a Wife by the Owlet Tribe? Alut. Alut Tribe. Aha. Once upon a time, there was a boy who lived all alone. Far from other people, he had a habit of lifting stones. At first small ones, and then larger and larger ones, as he grew and became stronger. So Sounds strong. like my kid. <laughs> Hulk smash! When he was old enough to marry, he decided to go out into the world and get a wife. Peaceably, if he could, but if not, then by fighting for her. Hot damn, bro! <laughs> After several days paddling, he came by night to a village. In one hut, he saw a light. So he went there and found a young girl who gave him something to eat and a place to sleep. The whole village heard of that the stranger had arrived, and soon an old man presented himself and shouted through the window of the hut. Our champion would like to try his strings with the new arrival. The ex- uh, girl explained the meaning of the challenge to the young man and advised him to accept. The first test consented, uh, consented, consisted of a hunt <laughs> uh, for... Consent is key, though. Let's <laughs> be honest. <laughs> the consented consisted of a hunt for beluga. Watched by all the people, the village champion and the stranger went off, each in his own boat. In the evening when they returned, it was the newcomer who had killed the largest number of the animals and was declared the winner. On the following day, another (laughs) challenger was delivered in the same manner. He's just out there punching whales. (laughs) Ah, Hulk smash! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This time, the contest uh, was a boat race around a large island facing the village. When the rivals met on the beach, their Berdarka's boats were side by side. Between them was placed a bow and arrow to be used by the va- by the victor on the vanquished. Oh, shit. Someone's getting shot. Two men... I don't know. It was like a fucking showdown almost. <laughs> I know, exactly. With the race in it. It really escalated. Okay, who can hunt the most for challenge one? Challenge two, hunger games, bitches. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> uh... The two men got uh, away together, and for a time the contest was doubt as first one, and then the other took the lead. But as the race progressed, the local champion gradually drew ahead of his rival until they lost sight of one another. So certain of the outcome were the old men on the shore, and they did not even stay to see the finish. But the newcomer spoke to his boat, which was made of the beluga skin, and commanded it to change into a beluga and swim under the water and overtake the other boat. (laughs) Beluga boat, go! (laughs) When the young man was close to shore, he and his boat came up, assumed their usual shape, and landed. When the local champion had lost sight of his rival, he had slowed up because he felt certain of the victory. Oh, it's a tortoise in the hair shit. Great was the astonishment. And fright when he saw the young stranger on the beach with the bow in his hand. He had little time to think, for a twice victorious, twice victorious hero shot him. While the hero was eating supper at the young girl's home, an old man came to ask him to go to the beach and withdraw the arrow from the defeated champion, since no one else could do it. The newcomer went to the beach and pulled the arrow out, and the villager became well again. 
<laughs> On the evening of the third day, the young man was challenged once more, and this time to a wrestling match in the village of the large house. In its center was a fenced-in pit containing many bones and shaman worms. The victor was to throw his opponent into this pit where the worms would eat him. Life, love, glory hung on the outcome. And both men fought hard and long. In the contest, (laughs) the young man's strength uh, derived from lifting stones proved decisive. With a skillful movement, he picked the local champion up off his feet and heaved him into the pit. (laughs) Hope smash! The crowd declared the young man to be the new village champion, and he went to home of his defeated rival to claim the spoils of war, which included two wives, furs, and all the luxurious possessions of a rich man. That's it. The old days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my husband's dead? No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm your new husband. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but the dude that was previously my husband? Oh, uh, yeah, he's just some guy. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Well, that was fun. Fun little American gladiator action there. Um, we're going to move right on. Move on to story three. Uh, teeth in the wrong place. <laughs> I've heard about this one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> By the Ponca Ote tribe. Yes. When Coyote was roaming around for adventures looking for great deeds to do, someone told of him and someone told him of an evil sorceress, an old woman who lived with her two wicked daughters. Many young w- uh, men went there to sleep with the daughters who were very handsome, but none was ever seen alive again. Mm. Coyote says, That's the place I want to (laughs) go. The person who told him about it said, Be careful. Whatever you do, do not sleep with these girls. They will kill you. Also, I've been told. Uh, Also, I've been told. (laughs) Coyote thought as he went off. How could sleeping with two pretty girls kill a man? The old woman was very nice to him when he arrived, and her two daughters were very beautiful indeed. Uh, (coughs) The bitch says, Come in, come in. You're a good-looking young man. Mm. Fresh, juicy. Just the kind of... (laughs) Just the kind of person I'd like to have for a son-in-law. Coyote went into the teepee with his bow and quiver. And the old woman said, sit down, sit down. You'll get something good to eat. My daughters will serve you. Juicy. 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 (laughs) The girls brought Coyote many good dishes, buffalo hump, tongue, all kinds of meats. Only one of the daughters, the older one said, oh, excuse me, only one. One of the daughters, the older one. (laughs) The only one, the only older one. She said, you sir are handsome. Oh my gosh, Juicy. Coyote thought to himself, <laughs> My informant was wrong. These are good people. By nightfall, Coyote was full of good food and getting drowsy. And the old woman says, You must be tired after your journey. And it's cold outside. Juicy. Lie down and sleep. <laughs> juicy. Juicy. <laughs> Stop down staring at my crotch, lady. You're <laughs> freaking me out. <laughs> Lie down and sleep between my two daughters. They'll keep you warm. (laughs) Juicy. 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 Coyote snuggled between the two girls, and he felt amorous. But he wondered. In the dark, the face of the young girl uh, fucking brushed his, and she whispered into his ear. Pretty soon, my sister will ask (laughs) you to sleep with her. Shh, shh. I'm I'm juicy, juicy, (laughs) juicy fruit, I think. I'm supposed to ask you to, but you mustn't do it. Coyote asked. Why not? (laughs) The girl said. (laughs) 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 It's hard to do those two voices at once. Good luck. (laughs) The old woman is a witch. (laughs) She's not really my mother. I'm a prisoner. The, the, the other girl, though, is her daughter. You, wanna, you really want to watch out for her. This witch has put teeth 
into both of our vaginas. I can actually smoke a cigarette with mine, too. I'll show you later. <laughs> when a man comes to visit, she gets him to, uh, you know, to try to stick his pee-pee in there, and, uh, and these teeth take hold of the pee-pee and uh, chew it off the bits, you know. It's uh, it's like hungry, hungry hippos, only with vaginas around here. <laughs> <laughs> Just gobbling up all the balls. <laughs> Once he puts it in, he can't pull it out either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I get it, it's just got such serious jaw power down there. Did I mention I could shoot a ping pong ball fifteen it's like feet? Like a pitbull's jaw. <laughs> yeah, it's like a pitbull's jaw. <laughs> it starts shaking and everything. <laughs> you should hear those poor young men cry. They cry until they died. They died of dicklessness. <laughs> but your butthole's free. But your butt, my butthole does not have teeth in it. But. I can also smoke a cigarette with that. <laughs> Coyote says. <laughs> Why do you tell me this? <laughs> the young girl says. Well, uh, you know, I'm looking... Uh, I, I kind of like you. Uh, I hate doing the old woman's dirty work and stuff, and I kind of want to get the teeth in my vagina done. I've got a serious cavity going on down there. <laughs> <laughs> After the boy young men die, uh, she takes all the things and she likes robbing them, but she likes hearing them die even more. Coyote says. I don't believe you. The young girl says. Oh, I'll show you the cavity. It's really bad. <laughs> I might need a root canal. <laughs> and then listen, uh, do you hear the noise? Coyote says. <laughs> Yes, I do hear it. A strange noise. The young girl says. I got a little bit of tetanus, so my vagina's got some lock jaw going on right now. <laughs> it's the grinding of teeth down there. It just grinds them like crazy. Coyote heard the grinding, and he believed what the girl said. Coyote and the girl pretended to sleep, and after a while, the older girl, older, old woman's daughter, Pulled out his sleeve, saying, and she whispered, like, strong man, you must be so hot for us. Like, let me make you happy. Get on top of me. Quick, quick. <laughs> quick, get into me. <laughs> Thinking quick, Coyote put it in her butt. <laughs> <laughs> Coyote could hear the teeth gnashing furiously inside her <laughs> vagina. <laughs> and Coyote says. It's just hers is ravenous. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's phobic at the mouth of it. <laughs> it's not uh, what it thinks. I've been thinking of nothing else since I first saw you, pretty one. But let me get my clothes off. The impatient girl says, "Hurry on! Don't want to put it in." Coyote took hold of a thick, long stick, still warm from the fire, and stuck it deep into the wicked girl's vagina. <laughs> the girl says, "Oh." Like a real man at last. How it feels good. A real big one for a change. A real big one for a change. She's just so not it. <laughs> it's clearly a script. <laughs> <laughs> the teeth inside her were chewing. The wood splinters were flying out all over. And Coyote thought. <laughs> Whew. <laughs> Whew, ha, this is really something Quickly he grabbed an arrow from his quiver And thrust it deep into the girl Before the teeth could snap it shut The teeth closed upon the shaft near the feathers But it was too late The arrow had already reached the evil girl's heart And then she died <laughs> Coyote went over to the old woman And killed her with his knife And told the young girl <laughs> You've saved my life So come with me and I'll marry you The girl says how can you? I'm still waiting for divorce papers from my ex-husband, Carl. <laughs> He's a real bag of dicks. I'd like to be a wife, but I have these teeth in my vagina also that I have to deal with. And the cavity I told you about. <laughs> That's a real thing. It's a real thing. Coyote told I her. I eat a lot of sweets. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take care of that. I'm actually a certified orthodontist. <laughs> They started off for Coyote's house and walked all day, walked all one day. When evening came, Coyote built a bush shelter for the two of them. 
He put Sage in for a bed, and he said, Now I'm going to make love to you. <laughs> she said, <laughs> Uh... <laughs> Uh, no, no, I don't think so. It, it, it'll totally kill you. Coyote says. <laughs> you have to, well, you have two other holes, but first I have to knock your teeth out. <laughs> but not the ones in your head. So he. Orthodontist humor is very dark. So he knocked out. The teeth in the girl's vagina, except for one blunt tooth, which was very thrilling when making love. They were happy, Coyote and this girl. The end. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it could have been weirder. He could have just given her braces. (laughs) It's not the teeth down there that bothered me. It's how crooked they were. (laughs) (laughs) They needed braces They needed braces And that cavity was no joke That one was way up there She needed stitches (laughs) (coughs) Uh, And then Ten years later He got his dick cut by wisdom teeth (laughs) Dun 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 You should have finished brother (laughs) Okay, moving on. Wow. That's a tough one to move on. (laughs) (laughs) It gets better. Toloem Woman and Butterfly Man by the Maidu tribe? Yep. Yeah, yeah. A Toloem woman went out to gather food. She took her child with her. She took her child with her. And while she worked, she stuck to the point of the cradle board in the ground and left the child alone. Yeah. The, the windows were cracked. <laughs> a large butterfly flew past and she started after it and chased it for a long time. She would almost catch it and then just miss. She thought. <laughs> I thought you were working. It's going to be a hard day. I'm going to but I'm going to catch that son of a bitch before too long. <laughs> Perhaps I can't run fast enough because of this heavy thing. And she threw away her deer skin robe. But she <laughs> never could quite overtake the creature. Finally, she threw away her apron too and hurried on chasing the butterfly <laughs> until <laughs> night came. Then, her child forgotten, she lay down under a tree and went to sleep. <laughs> when she awoke in the morning, she found a man laying beside her. He said, You have followed me this far. (laughs) Perhaps you would like to follow me always. If you must pass through a lot of my people. Without thinking of her child at all, the woman rose and followed the butterfly man. By and by, they came to a large valley whose southern side was full of butterflies. When the two reached the edge of the valley, the man said, No one has ever come before through here, through this valley alive. But you'll be safe if you don't lose sight of me. Follow closely, strange naked lady. They traveled for a long time. And again, the butterfly man would say over and over again, Keep a tight hold of me and don't let go. When they came halfway through the valley, other butterflies swam about them in great numbers. They flew every way and all around the couple's heads and their faces. For they wanted to get the Tallowim woman for themselves. But she watched them for a long time, holding tightly to her new husband. But at last, unable to resist, she let go of him and reached out to seize one of the others. She missed that one and tried to grab a new one, and now another. But she always failed, and so she wandered in the valley forever, dazed and lost. She died there. (laughs) And the butterfly man she had lost went on through the valley to his home. And now when people speak of the olden times, they say that that woman lost her lover and tried to get others, but lost them and then went crazy and died. The end. (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) that story had a little bit of a turn to it. (laughs) Oh, it's happy. Look at her chasing the butterflies. And then she died there. Okay. Oh, Oh, yeah. (laughs) She forget to eat. Yep. She forget to eat. Yeah, she's chasing butterflies. Turns out that uh, I'm an asshole for making fun of it because it was a mental illness. 
Thanks, Dick. Story. Where's there? <laughs> Way to go. Way to go. Way to go. Uh, well, moving on. Moving right along. Uh, right on along here. Patchy Chief punishes his wife by the Tiwa tribe. That's a good one. <laughs> the Yellow House people were traveling. They stopped by a lake to reach the deep water and put down a buffalo head to step on. The chief's wife, who was a good-looking woman, hey uh-huh. picked up her basket and went to fetch some water. When she came to the lake, she looked at the head and said, <laughs> My father, what a handsome man you were. I would have liked to have seen you alive. What a pity you're being trampled in this mud. As she finished speaking, <laughs> up sprang a white buffalo. The he bus- said, <laughs> Oh, hey there, buddy. I, uh, I'm the man you speak of. You know, I'm the white buffalo chief. Uh, I want to take you home with me and stuff. And uh, <laughs> you can uh, sit on my face in between my horns here. <laughs> or, uh, you know, otherwise you'll probably get trampled yourself there, Simba. <laughs> she left her water basket right there and climbed on. The sun was going down and the chief's wife did not come home. He said, <laughs> Well, something has happened. I should probably go see. And when he got to the lake, he found the basket and was looking around. He saw his wife's track and the track of the big buffalo leading to the east. He said, uh, the, bu- the buffalo's taking my wife. Not again. <laughs> he went back to his camp and for many, many days made arrows. When he had enough, he set out to find his wife. And as he walked, he nearly stepped on the house of Spider Old Woman. She said... <laughs> Hey, motherfucker, watch your step. Show, show, show. My grandchild, don't step on me. Grandchild, you are, you are a Apache chief living happy. Well, what are you doing around here? He huh? said. <laughs> <laughs> Apache chief. Apache chief. Yeah. Uh, grandmother, uh, I'm looking for my wife. She ran off with another buffalo. <laughs> can, uh, can you help me? She says. Oh, he's a powerful person, but I will give you medicine. Go now to go for old woman. He went along on the plane, and he became he came to Gopher's house, and said, "said this Gopher old woman, what are you doing around here? You are Apache chief, living happy. Why are you here?" <laughs> He says, <laughs> uh, yeah, "Yeah, Grandma, uh, I was living happy when my wife went to get water, but a uh, buffalo stole her, and I'm I'm going after her. I'd like to ask for your help." Gopher old woman says, "My grandson, your wife now has a husband of powerful man. Yes, I have read that. Oh. <laughs> 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 Your wife now has a husband, a powerful woman. He is a Buffalo White Chief, yes, and he is a tribe's uh, female female in laws, yes. And once they go to sleep in the middle of the night, they close lid around her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They all around her. It's quite disturbing. Quite disturbing. Her dress is trimmed with the the, uh, the elk teeth. Yeah, they go ta 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 <laughs> And they make a noise. It could be worse. It could be her vagina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is true. It could be her vagina, but it is not. And it makes a, a noise. It would be difficult to get her out, yes. You must go to the edge where stay there and lie, and I will do the rest, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Apache Chief came to the Buffalo Territory and hid to watch them. White Buffalo Chief had the stolen wife dancing, and the buffalo sang, Yahi, Yahi. You want me to sing it all? <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, he, ah, he, yeah. <clears throat> you want me to keep going? <laughs> <laughs> There's like three more lines. Anyway, the Apache crept near the dance and spat all out the medicine Spider Old Woman had given, <laughs> and all the buffalo went to sleep. Gopher Old Woman borrowed underground into the girl's ear and said, I'll come for you. Apache chief living happy is waiting outside for the hood. The girl said. Oh, my my current husband over here, Carl the Buffalo, <laughs> is, a, is a powerful man. You know, my, my dress is made of elk teeth. 
and it's, it'll make a lot of noise uh, if I try to leave. So I'll probably should probably just stay here. Gopher told her to gather the dress up under her arms, and then Gopher led the way. And they slipped through the group of sleeping buffalo. Her husband was waiting, and he said, uh, I've, I have come for you. You're my wife, and I want you back, honey. And she told them they must hurry to a safe place. The plain was large, and they came to three cottonwood trees. They could feel the earth trembling, and white buffalo had walked or had waked up and was shouting at his clan, saying, <laughs> hey, hey, someone took <laughs> off. Oh. Hey there, uh, someone, uh, someone took off with my wife over here. <laughs> the herd follows the tracks towards the trees, and Apache chief said to the first cottonwood, <laughs> but brother, uh, the buffalo are coming. Uh, we hide us. The first tree says, "Friend, you must go fuck yourself. I am old and soft." <laughs> <laughs> so Apache Chief went to the next tree, and he said, <laughs> "Why don't you snort a couple Viagras?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Br- brother, uh, hey, uh, the buffalo are coming. Please hide us. And the tree says. Go fuck yourself. Go to the next one. And so he went to the third. And the young tree with one branch said, Hey, Apache chief, come on up into my branches. I'll help you. I only got one. I only got one. Come up into my branch. (laughs) And after they were safely up, the wife said that she had to urinate. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Apache chief folded up his buffalo hide and told her to urinate on it. But her water leaked through, and the buffalo were passing, and the dust was rising, and the earth was trembling. <laughs> Piss on the buffalo. <laughs> and the rear of the pack was a shabby old buffalo and a smaller one. As they came under the tree, the little buffalo says, Grandpa, I can smell the water of our daughter-in-law. <laughs> they looked up and saw the man and the woman in the tree. The old buffalo said, Grandchild, you are fast. Run and tell the first one that you reach, and each will tell the next one. <laughs> Soon the whole herd had turned back, and each one in succession. I like to imagine they're all Canadian too. Oh, hey. Oh, hey there. Hey. Hey, <laughs> over. Hey, oh, hey, turn around over here. Okay, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry. <laughs> each one in succession buttered the tree. Butted. Buttered. Butted the tree, and Apache Chief tried to shoot them. Then White Buffalo Chief took a running start and crashed against the tree. The young Cottonwood was nearly down, and the Apache Chief could not kill White Buffalo Chief. Crow was cawing above them. Cow! Apache Chief says cow. angrily to the crow. <laughs> uh, hey, why are you doing that? Uh, I'm clearly in a bad situation. Wouldn't you just help out or something? The crow says. I came to tell you to shoot him in the heinous. <laughs> the cow! <laughs> That's where his life is, right in his pooper. <laughs> so the Apache <laughs> shot White Buffalo in the anus and killed him. <laughs> right up Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> he and his wife came from the tree and started to butcher the buffalo beside the little fire. <laughs> her husband. <laughs> Tears ran down her cheeks. <laughs> she was happy. <laughs> Apache Chief says... <laughs> <laughs> Are you crying because I'm butchering the white buffalo? His wife says. No, it's the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Apache chief kept on butchering, and he looked at her again and said, You are crying, aren't you? She says. No, no, it's just the smoke. And then he stared at her for a while and then said, <laughs> You are crying, after all. <laughs> it just keeps. I think my husband's broken. <laughs> you are crying, after all our troubles. You still want this man? Now you die with him. And he took his bow and <laughs> arrow and Jesus. shot her. Oh, God, this story just took a turn. <laughs> well, I'm just your friendly wife murdering guy. <laughs> I'm Apache chief, chief of a roving tribe. I will wander over these plains, watching the earth. If any woman leaves her husband, what I have done to my wife will be done to her. Yep. Mass murderer. You like that? 
<laughs> that took it just took a real quick turn right there. You weren't expecting that, right? <laughs> Wasn't at all expecting it. <laughs> I mean, it seemed like she was in love with Buffalo, and it sounded like, from what he said, this isn't the first time she's run off. <laughs> I mean, it's a possibility. <laughs> she's always running off with Buffalo. So, <laughs> and he's always going to get her furry. back. And she's like, oh, thanks. She's got like a weird furry obsession. Yeah. She's like, well, if you would just dress as a fox for me once in a while. Yeah, even a raccoon will fucking do. Okay, you never wear that Buffalo costume, I get you, Carl. <laughs> Jacob. Jacob. <laughs> go Carl's Jacob. the Buffalo. <laughs> At least Carl had a big... <laughs> At least Carl had a big old buffalo schwanz. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're on to our last story already. On to our last story, yeah. If you like these, please subscribe. Subscribe. Rate, ring remember. a bell, give us stars, write a review, tell us what you think. Yeah. Give us a request, yeah. you know? Tell us, hey, hi, how's it going? <laughs> give, me, give me a region. Give me a... Give me a... Hey... E. 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 Okay, moving on. Okay. Uh, the Stolen Wife by the Tiwa tribe. Got a lot of Tiwas. A lot of Tiwas. Okay. Once upon a time in the village of Kuochitai lived an untidy old man and an untidy old woman. Also living with them was their grandson, Tiny Flower, and his wife, White Corn. And the young couple's baby girl. The cold weather was coming on, and to prepare for the winter, Tiny Flower went to the mountains every day and hunted deer. One morning, soon after he had left the house, White Corn picked up her water jar and took it to the Green Willow Lake. There, she filled up the jar, and as she leaned over the water, she spotted a magic stick under the surface and pulled it out. The stick belonged to the governor of the Yellow Kachina people, and he was a personage of with great powers, whose duty was to make it rain, thunder, and clouds every day in the four directions. I'll make it rain. <laughs> Talk to me about my golden showers. <laughs> Although the governor lived far from the lake, his power was such that he had been able to watch white corn from his home like a fucking perv. Like a perv. Seeing how beautiful she was, he used his magic stick to fly her. <laughs> Fly on the magic oh, stick. stick. Magic stick to fly to her. Sorry. Aha, flying stick. Now he jumped out from behind a bush and cried. <laughs> <laughs> Holy ho, you can't take that stick. It belongs to me. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Laughing, White Corn darted away, and the governor chased her around and around the lake. She enjoyed being run after by some handsome stranger. While the governor was wishing that he could have the beautiful woman for his wife, out of breath, White Corn finally came to a stop and handed him his stick. He said, Lady White Corn, may I have some of your water? White Corn offered him her filled jar, and he drank some and gave it back. White Corn says, If a person drinks from the jar and doesn't finish it all, the custom is to pour the rest on them. Like now the it was the governor who darted away and Whitecorn who chased him. <laughs> but he didn't run very fast, for he enjoyed having her splash him with water. Oh no, don't get me wet. My white t shirt will become see through. <laughs> <laughs> he says. <laughs> Lady Whitecorn, wouldn't you like to go to my place? She asked. <laughs> Where do you live? He says, Oh, not far away. I live at the top of the Flint Covered Mountain. It's Did just you? over there, yonder. What does she say? Does she say anything? I cannot. I must get back to my precious child. <laughs> yeah, she says, Not my thing. child. <laughs> White Corn emptied her water jar and placed it upside down at the edge of the lake and said, Oh, I, I got you. Okay. <laughs> both the governor and White Corn sat on the magic stick. Or, whoa, whoa, excuse me. Both the governor. The governor took White Corn and sat her on the magic stick. I'm the governor of Flint Mountain. <laughs> and in moments, they reached the top of Flint Covered Mountain. Wow, I was having a hard time with that <laughs> Sorry. Even though I'm the only one who lives there, I'm still the governor. 
<laughs> on the rooftop, the governor's house was a ladder made of cedar wood. I would sneeze so much. The two <laughs> climbed down the ladder and into the house. And at once, the governor said, <laughs> Governor. <laughs> governor. Governor. <laughs> Lady Whitecorn, this is my home. And now it is your home, too. White we co- live together. White corn had been tricked. Like it or not, she had to stay with the governor and miss her beautiful <laughs> yeah. little girl. I thought we were just going to bang one out real quick and I was going to get back to my family. When Tiny Flower returned home and found that his wife had gone, he dropped everything he was carrying and heard to his, hurried to his grandparents. His grandfather said, My son, we found our jar turned upside down at the lake. We've looked and asked all over, but no one has seen her. Tiny Flower searched again for his wife and visited almost every home in the village, but he learned nothing. The baby cried and cried, and the grandparents had been taking her to be fed and nursed by the other mothers in the village. But still she cried day and night. The best that the old couple and Tiny Flower could do was carry her back and forth and try to soothe her. Days passed, and Tiny Flower grew sadder and sadder. He laid on the rooftop and grieved. Even his arrow bag made of the mountain lion's skin lay empty on the floor where he had dropped it the first night he returned. His grandfather said at last, uh, What? Oh, you, you, you gotta go back to Grandmother Spider. Uh, she'll know where White Court is. Uh, because she can spin a web and uh, all these part, different parts of the earth and shit. Carrying gifts, including a little bag of blue cornmeal, Tiny Flower set out to visit Grandmother Spider. He reached her house after many days of walking, and he said after she had invited him in, Grandmother, this is a home of reverence, a home of respect, and I have entered it humbly. My heart is heavy, sad thoughts disturb my mind, (laughs) and with your permission, I would like to tell you of my troubles. (laughs) <laughs> and he spoke of his missing wife and the crying baby. <laughs> Too much. His name's Tiny Flower. <laughs> it's just a big answer. I'm I'm Tiny Flower, destroyer of worlds. <laughs> <laughs> Grandmother Spider says, <laughs> "My son, your wife was at the top of the Flint Covered Mountain, where the governor of the Yellow Cochina people took her." He said. I must get her. She says. Uh, well, first, go up, go, go home, and clean yourself up. You, you smell like ass. <laughs> <laughs> go into the pure lake water, and then fill your bag with arrows. Then return to me, and I will give you instructions. And some of my medicine. I got the medicinal shit. It's real fire. Tiny Flower <laughs> traveled quickly and reached home in four days. He cleansed himself and carefully and rose the next morning before the sun was up. After offering blue cornmeal to the grand or to the great spirit, he started out again, and in three days he arrived at Grandmother Spider's. She said, Russell, take this pipe and this big old bag of ganja. <laughs> this uh, medicine stick over here. Uh, just before you reach the governor's house. Bite off a piece of the medicine stick, mix it with your saliva, and rub it on your body, just all over your body. Don't forget your dick. Don't forget your dick. Behind your ears. Don't forget your taint. Taints always get neglected, but they're important, too. (laughs) (laughs) Use the pipe and smoke a big old fat bowl so you're nice and chill for when the governor comes. (laughs) And he'll challenge you to match his powers. If you win, you can... Probably do some stuff like he might give you back your wife. But if you lose, he'll keep white corn and you probably die. Tiny Flower thanked Grandmother Spider, who blessed him and told him not to be afraid. Then, putting the pipe and the bag of ganja and the medicine stick in his quiver, he went on his way. His journey took several days, and he had to pass Shufani and Dioa Cheyao Mountains. Chi- Chuyi Mountains. And then he followed the trail of the bears, which led to the top of Flint Covered Mountain. Over the valley and through the woods to Grandmother's house we go. (laughs) (laughs) 
To Sorry. governor's house, you go. To the governor's house. Oh. Tiny Flower quickly found the governor's house and saw the smoke was coming out of it. So he climbed to the roof and stamped on it violently. And out came White Corn. She said, <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Oh, my husband, why are you here? The governor of the Yellow Cochina people is so cruel, so powerful that something awful will happen to you. Tiny Flower says, Don't be afraid. I've come to take you home. White Corn replied, well, first, you must wait for the governor. He said that I belong to him now, and he would be so angry if he found me missing. I sh- you know, I should probably wait around so I can dump him face to face. It's better that way than ever. It's telephone. better. Otherwise, he would hunt us down and kill us for sure. He's gone to the south to make thunder and rain. He likes to make it rain on them hoes. <laughs> but he comes home for dinner at noon. Whitecorn gave Tiny Flowers some cornbread while they waited, and at noon the governor said, I smell anuses. Ashes, sorry, ashes. <laughs> Whitecorn, you've fed someone here, haven't you? She says, No, no, there's no one here who would dare come. He says, Governor says. Governor. <laughs> yeah. I know you have someone here. Where is he? Bring him out. I want to see him. I want to meet him. White Corn confessed, saying, Well, someone is here. It's my husband, and he's come to take me home. Angrily, the governor asked, <laughs> Where is he? And did you tell him that we've been begging for months without him ever knowing? <laughs> she said in a husky voice, Shh! He's in the next room. <laughs> uh, the governor said, why doesn't he come out? Call him. And out came Tiny Flower at that moment. <laughs> he likes to stand behind the curtain dressed as Batman. <laughs> He's whacking it off He's in the closet, <laughs> ready to take out his Superman. He wants to watch us. He's, He's kind of a weird guy, but... uh. <laughs> the governor says, <laughs> Governor. Aha! <laughs> uh-huh. Look who's here. Tiny Flower the Deer Hunter. <laughs> We shall see who of us is the better man, and whoever is more powerful will keep white corn. I imagine he's like four foot two. (laughs) Tiny flower says. (laughs) (laughs) Poor me. (laughs) You got this. I don't have any magical powers or know any tricks, but I must do as you say. The governor pointed to the center of the room and said, Sit on top of this wiener. Flagstone, sorry. (laughs) And Tiny Flower did as he was told. And he said, Well, that's the contest. You've won it. (laughs) White Corn, stand here beside me. And White Corn moved to the governor's side. The governor prepared a pipe and lit it and gave it to Tiny Flower and said, (laughs) This gin is some good, some good Afghani Kush. You probably should try some. Here, smoke this. It's like training day. Here, <laughs> smoke this. It wasn't a question, motherfucker. I said smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> puff, puff, puff went the smoke as Tiny Flower pulled on the pipe. It's good gin. Soon he began to feel dizzy. He swayed back and forth in those sides and swayed right. And then to the left, but he did not fall over. You know, he did not. And the governor said, (laughs) Well, you must know something. Uh, What did you see while you were tripping balls there? Tiny Flower says. (laughs) The governor says, Shit, I didn't know you liked to get wet. (laughs) 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 I know nothing. I don't live by the night. Poor me. The things I do are done. In the daytime. So how could I know the things of the spirits? Seeing that the tobacco had not worked, the governor began to sing, and White Corn joined in, and together they sang... (laughs) Ah, (laughs) Tiny flower man, if you are a man, your beloved wife you can take with you, with you. If you're not a man, here, <laughs> this <laughs> lightning you take with you. <laughs> Tiny flower just sitting there all baked. Fuck. I think I'm so high that everything just turned into a musical. 
And the governor of the Yellow Kachina people struck at Tiny Flower with a bolt of lightning. <laughs> However, it had just missed him. Four times the governor and Whitecorn sang. <laughs> He's fucking ah. <laughs> throwing lightning, man. <laughs> They're just Freaking sitting there out. watching him. Yeah. I should have told them how much LSD I put in this. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> or that was what was it the stick he's supposed to rub all over his body rub this all over yeah, your body he's like he's, like he's just tripping balls uh-huh. that's why the lightning's passing over him uh-huh. sure that's why he's tripping balls anyway, I mean maybe he is four times the governor and white corn sang and four times the bolt of lightning missed tiny flower <laughs> The governor had failed, and now it was up to Tiny Flower to test the powers of Grandmother Spider had given him. Tiny Flower says, It's your turn to sit on the stone. As the governor seated himself, Tiny Flower in white corn to tighten her belt and the laces of her moccasins, and then she, uh, then he prepared the tiny pipe that he had taken from Grandmother Spider and told the governor to smoke it. <laughs> it's a spider-sized pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, uh... The governor says, Ho, 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 ho! What can this little thing do to me in Thoth Mall? I might swallow the thing whole. <laughs> he took one puff and became super dizzy. Holy he took shit, three man. more. <laughs> puff, 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 and over the floor rolled the governor. What the fuck is this stuff? <laughs> it's medical grade. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny flower and white corn sing. Ah. <laughs> you look a china governor man. Mm. <laughs> if you are a man, mm. my beloved wife, you can have. You can have. If you're not a man here, mm. this lightning bar. bolt you can take with you. Woohoo. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> the tiny flower and the governor is singing there like, bro. <laughs> Bro, we fuck? should totally form a band. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should, man. I think we would crush it. I think so, too. Can you play an instrument? Well, I can do this. I can string a ball. <laughs> Whoa, that, that just it's blew my music. mind, sir. <laughs> yeah. And Tiny Flower struck the governor with a bolt of lightning, <laughs> which did not miss. But split him in two. Oh, no. Now four I times, two of me. <laughs> four times Tiny Flower and White Corn sang, and four times the governor was hit by lightning. <laughs> Tiny Flower tore the governor's body into four pieces and then took White Corn by the hand and left the house. Am I, free? Am I tripping out or is there eight of him? <laughs> he told her. <laughs> Be brave and strong, my wife. I'm taking you home. Hand in hand, White Corn and Tiny Flower ran along the top of the flint-covered mountain and soon came to the trail of bears, which led them down to the valley and back to Grandmother Spider's house. There, they stopped just long enough to thank her and return her medicine. You and she, return it. And yeah. she told them to hurry because she knew that the governor was coming back to life. <laughs> sure enough, in the distance, Tiny Flower and White Corn saw a small white cloud. The governor was just beginning to breathe again, and it was not long before the sky darkened and thunder and lightning began to play all around White Corn and Tiny Flower governor. as they ran. When they passed the river with red water, rain had caught up with them, and by the time they reached the Unque, it was falling faster and faster. Tiny Flower urged White Corn to keep running, for they were just a mile away from home. The Rio Grande was next river they crossed, and hail began to fall. All kinds of birds were circling above them, but they kept running. They had only a few hundred yards to go when the hail came so heavy that they could not move. Tiny Flower and White Corn lay on the ground, and all the birds that had been following, crows, eagles, hawks, owls, sparrows, and more, swooped down and protected the man and the woman with their spread wings. Mm -hmm. The birds that were on top... You know who wasn't there? Magpie, because the magpies are dicks. Fuck dicks. <laughs> Magpie was just watching, like, sucks to suck, loser. I know, and they come over and they just drop glass on him. <laughs> he you. was dropping glass on him while he's getting a help Ah, was that a screw? Fuck you, Magpie. <laughs> God, I pick up so many fucking screws in the yard all the time from those damn birds. Anyway, the birds that were on top with the great canopy... Struck by the hail, became spotted while the ones underneath, like the crows, kept their solid color. 
When the rain and hail stopped, Tiny Flower promised the birds that the next four days he would bring them four deer to eat. Then the couple reached home at last. The grandparents and the baby girl rejoiced, and Whitecorn was so happy that she cried. And as the legend goes, it became, it is because of her return that Whitecorn still grows in the village of San Juan. Ah-ha-ha! Uh-huh. Zian. Yeah. And also, uh, Governor and Tiny Flower did end up making up, and they did start a band, but it didn't, it didn't ever get out it of the garage. It did yeah, not get yeah. anywhere. They never got to actually perform live. <laughs> 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 they were called Thunder and the Flower, in case you were wondering. Yeah. Thunder Flower. And they were uh, Polk Death Metal. Ooh. Interesting. Polka nice. death metal. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of clashing. A lot of fights. Yeah. It's a really weird type There's... of music, but I think we should totally be a death polka band. It was a lot of drama because, you know, white corn kind of became uh-huh. wife yeah, to I mean, two husbands at Yeah, some and everyone point. knows white corn was responsible for breaking up the band anyway. Yeah. She was like a Courtney Love. She, <laughs> Yoko Tiny Ono Flower. over here. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny Flower died eventually. Yeah. Tiny Flower died eventually. Under mysterious circumstances, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hope you folks enjoyed this. Had yeah. fun with it. Had a good time. I did. I did. Uh, we definitely did. I mean... I'm still a little sore from all the laughing earlier. Oh, the toothy vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> One lame tooth he left. One lame tooth because he liked the feel of it. <laughs> it wiggled on its own. Ooh, it tickles my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like putting a hard stone on your balls. Uh-huh. Well, on that note, uh, good night, everybody. Hey, don't forget to subscribe. Oh, yeah, like, be sure to subscribe, like, check us out, share, you check it. us out, tell your friends about us, tell your parents, tell your aunties, your uncles. Check out our merch shop. Yeah, uh, check out our merch shop, teespring.com slash high dash mythology dash merch. Yeah. And remember, we're going to take a week off next week, yeah, and then we'll be off. back. With Legends and Tales yeah. of the American West. Mm-hmm. Follow us on Twitter at Howley Boys, H A O L E underscore B O Y S. Yeah, that's where we post all of our information. So yeah. find us, follow check us, us uh, check us out. Uh, Have good a good night, night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.